solving polynomial inequalities in the context of word problems. The first example has a parent building a cage uh, in the shape of a rectangular solid, so a rectangular prism. The edges are made of wood. So this diagram, which is not included in your notes, is effectively the diagram we're looking at. The black portions are the uh, lengths of wood that the parent is going to assemble together to make the cage. Important piece of information here, the length of the base has to be twice the width. And she's going to use a total of 40 feet of wood. So it says, determine the possible widths of the base that will give a volume greater, to 30, greater than 32 cubic feet. And then express this problem first as a function and solve the inequality to the nearest decimal place if necessary. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, we have our let statements, which is let w, h, and l represent width, height, and length, respectively. So we're going to go ahead and copy those out. Um, and then what I'd like to do is I'd like to label these on, on the diagram. So we see that this right here, that's a length. This is a length. This is a length. This is a length. This is height right here. And you, you'll hopefully notice that we have four of each of them, rather four of each of the dimensions. So um, if we have four of each of the dimensions and in total um, we have 40 feet of wood being used, that means that we have four lengths plus four widths plus four heights all adding together to equal to 40 feet. Now I see everything there is divisible by four, so I'm just gonna divide everything by four right now and go length plus width plus height is equal to 10. Uh, in the question, it stipulates that the length is equal to twice the width, right? And I also know that length is equal to twice the width, so instead of writing length, I'm gonna write two width plus width plus height is equal to 10. Uh, I have then three widths plus height is equal to 10. And I'm going to put height by itself and put 10 minus three widths. So uh, what we have done here, and I'm just going to sort of circle these right here because these are kind of important equations. And we'll see in a second why they are important. The question asks me to express this problem first as a function. So I have to first express volume as a function, right? So volume is equal to length times width times height. But as we can see here, I can have length as a function of width and I can have height as a function of width. So I'm just gonna substitute, uh, instead of length, I'm gonna write 2w then I'm going to write w here for the width again, and then height. Instead of writing height, I'm going to write 10 minus 3w. And so those um, substitutions were done using information given to us in the problem. Now, what I have is I have volume entirely in terms of the different of the width, right? So I have volume as a function of width is equal to 2 w squared 10 minus 3w. And when I expand and simplify that, I'm going to have 2, or sorry, volume as a function of width. Uh, then I'll have negative 6 cubic widths plus 20 square widths. Right? And all I've done there is just uh, expand into the brackets and rearrange the equation so that we go from highest order to lowest order. Okay, so the final piece of information that I have is that the volume has to be greater than 32 feet. So um, I'm gonna just restate the equation, right? And this is in fact not, if I was to be precise, it's not an equation, it's actually an inequality because the volume has to be greater than 32 feet. So I have to write six cubic feet, or sorry, six cubic widths plus 20 square widths have to be greater than 32. Since my leading coefficient there is uh, negative, that's not necessarily a problem, um, but just to clean it up a little bit, I see here everything is divisible by two and 
I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. So in dividing everything by negative 2, I should end up with the following inequality. 3 cubic widths, um, and then sorry, minus 10 square widths. And then this would be negative 16, but I'm going to bring it over to the other side. So I'm going to have plus 16. And I have to remember to flip my sign because I divided by a negative number here. Okay, so if you didn't follow, um, and the negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. The 20 divided by negative 2 is negative 10. Uh, on the right side, I had 32 divided by negative 2, so that would have been negative 16, right? But then I took that and I brought it over to the other side there, right? And that became positive 16 and then equals, or rather is less than or equal to 0. And again, notice that I had to flip the sign because I divided by a negative number. So um, in keeping with what we've done in the in the past with respect to these problems, um, you make one side equal to zero and then you look at factoring it. I can't see anything that is um, immediately factorable uh, in this, but what I will try, however, is I will try um, two, right? So if I try two, uh, insert that is, insert the number 2 into this, I will in fact get 0. So that means that, um, therefore, uh, w minus 2 is a factor, right? And I got that using factor theorem, all right? I'm not going to actually go through trying it out um, because we've done this uh, fairly extensively over the past couple of units, right? You insert 2 into the polynomial expression, uh, if it returns a remainder of 0, then that means that um, w minus 2 is a factor. And if w minus 2 is a factor, then we can use synthetic division to uh, simplify this polynomial expression. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my synthetic division. 2, okay. And then um, I have to be very careful about my coefficients here. 3, negative 10, but because I don't have w here, I have to put 0 and then 16. So I bring the 3 down, all right, and then I bring the 6 up, add them negative 4, okay, multiply by negative 2, I get negative 8, add them together, negative 8, and then I'll get negative 16, and that should yield a 0, which is what I was expecting because uh, w minus 2 is a, is a factor of that cubic. So instead of rewriting that cubic, what I'll write now is I'll write w minus 2, and then I'll write 3w squared minus 4w minus 8. And that together must be less than 0. So I already know one of my zeros. And one of my zeros is, um, is 2. But I don't know the 0 that comes from the, uh, this expression right here. I'm going to highlight here. I don't know what the zeros are. I can't factor that. right? So what I'm going to have to do here is I'm just going to go and I'm going to come up here and I have to say that basically I want to find these zeros. So 3w squared minus 4w minus 8 is equal to 0. And because I can't factor that, I'm just going to go straight into the um, quadratic formula. So w is equal to negative b, so 4 plus or minus negative 4 squared minus 4a, which is 3, and c, which is negative 8. And that's all square rooted all over 2 times 3. Um, so when I go ahead to simplify that, right, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time um, working through the simplification of that. I think you guys can manage that on your own. Um, I end up with two w's there. And so 1w uh, is equal to approximately uh, 2.43 okay so I'm going to write that a little bit better 2.43 and uh, w2 is approximately equal to negative uh, 1.10 okay let me just actually change that instead of writing and I'll write or because we have two possible values right okay so I can throw out one of these possible values which is this one right here I can throw out the width being negative 1.10 because width is a dimension and um, uh, it can't be a negative. You can't have a negative width. 
So the two uh, um, the two zeros that work, right? So therefore, the two widths that produce a volume equal to 32 cubic feet are 2, which I got from over here, and 2.43. Now you might be thinking, well, Mr. Mancini, we had uh, a 0 over here, right? That this equals 0. It doesn't equal 32 feet, right? But the 0 came from when we originally inserted the 32 and then we brought it over to the other side. So we are solving for widths that um, these are the these are the cases that would allow it to be exactly 32. The issue is that we don't want um, the widths that give us exactly 32. We want widths that give us a volume greater than 32, right? So we want widths that cause this expression to be less than zero because that's how we set up our inequality. So that leads me to uh, performing an interval chart, right? So I have to do an interval chart just as we've seen in the past. So zero, w, and two, then between two and 2.43, and then widths greater than 2.43. Okay, so as a result, um, I'm gonna create my two factors here, w minus two, and then also uh, three w squared minus four w minus eight. And so, uh, and then I'm going to look at overall positive and negative. Right. Okay, so I'll take a test value between um, 0 and 2. So if I do 1, w minus 2 is going to be negative, right? Um, and if I do 1 here as well, well, 3 minus 4 is equal to negative 7. Neg or sorry, I apologize. 3 minus 4 is equal to negative 1. And then negative one minus eight is equal to negative nine. So um, what we'd have there is we still have a negative. Um, so negative times a negative overall gives me a positive. This is not something I'm looking for because I want the function as we set it up here to be less than zero, right? Uh, so the function has to be less than zero. Uh, therefore, uh, this right here means it's greater than zero. So any dimension between zero and two won't work. We can do a test value between 2 and 2.43, and um, like say for example, we do 2.2, uh, right? Okay, so that would be, if we did 2.2, this one would be positive. But if we inserted, um, say, 2.2 into this function, we would actually end up with a negative value for this factor. So positive times negative is equal to uh, negative right here, okay? And so this looks like it's a good uh, contender because any value for a width that's between 2 and 2.43 will result in a negative value right here. And if we have any value greater than w, or sorry, greater than 2.43, uh, then we'll have a positive over here, and then we should also have a positive over here, and that's positive, which is not what we want, right? We want values that would cause this expression to be negative, right? And that was set up from up here. So it looks like the only um, widths that are possible are widths between 2 and 2.43. So uh, therefore, any width between 2 and 2.43 feet, okay, that's, or let's write approximately, because we uh, approximated it up here and approximately 2.243 feet will produce a volume greater than 32 cubic feet. Note that we uh, are not going to include two, nor are we gonna include 2.43, because those would give volumes exactly equal to 32 cubic feet. And the question said that it wanted a volume greater than 32 cubic feet.
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just quickly review. Um, we had our let statement. We set up the equations based on the information we were given in the question. So we looked at the question, we wrote some equations, and then we wrote volume specifically only in terms of width with one variable, right? We made that expression greater than 32 because that's what it said in the question. Then we um, went through and solved this. Uh, rather, we brought everything over to the other side. We made it less than uh, zero, and we factored this okay, into the two factors. One of the factors um, right here is not further factorable using conventional methods. So we had to use our quadratic formula to find the two zeros here, um, and then uh, set up our interval chart, and we picked the interval that uh, aligned with our statement down here. Okay, so all this is is effectively, um, again, it's just a polynomial inequality, something that we've been doing in the last uh, lesson, but now in the context of word problems. So if we look over here, uh, an open top box uh, can be created by cutting congruent squares from each of the four corners of a piece of cardboard that has dimensions 20 by 30 and folding up the sides. So uh, here's the diagram right here and I pulled this from the textbook um, because maybe that description itself is insufficient in helping you understand it. Determine the dimensions of the squares that uh, must be cut to create a box with a volume at least equal to 1008 centimeters cubed. Okay, so I'm going to, again, I'll write my let statements here. So um, I didn't type these ones out. I'll just write them by hand. Uh, let L, H, and W represent length, height, and width, respectively. Okay, so if I want those to represent uh, length, height, and width respectively, I can write an equation for volume. Right? So volume is equal to length times width times height. Now, take a look. This is what I, we're doing here. We're cutting out these congruent squares uh, with dimensions x by x. And then we're going to fold this portion up, and we're going to fold this portion up, and we're going to fold that portion and that portion right there. And that will create our box, our open topped box. And that has to have a volume at least equal to 1008, so greater or equal to 1008. Notice that uh, the length here is 30 centimeters, but you're subtracting two x's, so length is 30 minus 2x. The width here is 20 centimeters, but we're subtracting uh, two x's from there. And then when you fold these up, right, the height will be equal to x. So I can actually take this entire expression and make it a function um, that is dependent on x because instead of length, I can write 30 minus 2x. Width, I can write 20 minus 2x. And height is just x. So um, I'm going to uh, expand uh, that entire expression there. And so volume is equal to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this should be uh, 4x cubed minus 100x squared plus 600x. Okay. So I have a cubic there, and uh, it looks like the volume has to be at least equal to 1008. So therefore, this function has to be at least greater or equal to 1,008 uh, cubic centimeters. Again, we take that over to the other side. and we set one side equal to zero. All of these um, terms are divisible by four, so I'm gonna divide everything by four, 
and I reduce that to this right here. Okay. Um, again, I can't uh, think of any way to factor this uh, using common factoring or factoring by grouping. So I'm going to try a whole bunch of different um, values and see what will return a remainder of zero. And I find that when x is equal to zero, I get a remainder of zero. So using my remainder theorem. Uh, so therefore, x minus three is a factor. Okay, so if x minus three is a factor, um, then I'm gonna go into uh, my, um, my synthetic division, and I'm gonna do that separately at the top here just so that it doesn't uh, get in the way of our work. So that means three, and uh, I have one, negative 25, 150, and negative 252. I'll bring that down. Okay. And okay, so this allows me to factor out or factor that cubic. So I will have therefore x minus 3 times x squared minus 22x plus 84 has to be greater or equal to zero. So when I look at this right here, I have, um, I have two possibilities. If I let x is equal to three, then this will have exactly a volume of 1008, right? Because that's one of my zeros here. This one here though, I can't seem to find um, a way to factor that. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna set, remember this has to be uh, equal to zero. I'm looking for my zeros here, right? And so I'll use my quadratic formula. Uh, so 22 plus or minus negative 22 squared minus four, A is one, C is 84. Okay all over 2a, which is just 2. And then I'll have two x values, x1, which is approximately equal to 17.1, or x2, which is approximately equal to 4.9. Now, um, you have to look at both of these values. And you might think originally, well, they're both positive, and you know, x is a dimension, so this should work. Well, it doesn't. 17.1, if we multiplied that by two, uh, we should get uh, 34.2. 20 minus 34.2 would give us a negative width, right? So we can't have that, right? So this would not work. That would produce negative dimensions. So even though it is a positive, when we back substitute it into here, we would get negative dimensions, right? 4.9 works though, um, so that's okay, right? And the other x value that worked that's okay is three. Three works, that one's okay as well. So just as we saw before, we have to have our interval chart. So we'll uh, do our little interval chart over here. Uh, hopefully there's enough room for you guys um, and so my interval chart is going to be between zero and um, zero and three, and then it's going to be between uh, three and four point nine, and then it's going to be greater than four point nine. And I look at my factors. I look at x minus three, and then I look at this factor over here, which is x squared minus twenty two x plus eighty four. Uh, hopefully, you can do a, a little bit of a better job than I did. And then we're gonna see if it's positive or negative overall. Okay, so when I do between zero and three, uh, I get a negative value over here, but I get a um, positive value right here. And so negative times positive, that should give me a negative value. 
When I take a number between 3 and 4.9, I get a positive value here, but I also get a positive value over here. So overall, that becomes positive, right? Um, and then if I take a, a greater value than 4.9, well, this becomes positive here, and that becomes negative, and then overall, I have a negative uh, function. So it looks like the only uh, one that will work is this right here. So basically, um, you would say that therefore, any value of x equal to or between 3 and approximately 4.9 centimeters would produce a volume greater or equal to 1,008 cubic centimeters. Great, so unfortunately that turned into a slightly longer video than I'd hoped, but um, that was just basically a step-by-step -step way of how to approach um, uh, contextual problems using polynomial inequalities. Thanks for watching.